Nicosia. Timeless Hospitality. Welcome everybody, we are in the 15th Cyprus International Film Festival, Inspire TV Live Talks. We are at the third day of the festival and we have our special guest today, Princess Angelique Monet, who is a participant also this year with her uh, short documentary, Royal Unites, uh, Royal Empire. Empires Unite, and Karl uh, Bardos, uh, he, he's a professor in uh, Teach in, in New York University and also a member of the jury of uh, the short films this year. It is our honor that both of you are here. And uh, we met uh, two years ago, I think, in Cannes Film Festival, right, Angelique? Yes. Yes. And uh, you, I mean, three years ago. And two years ago, you inaugurated uh, the first uh, uh, smart uh, phone festival uh, running parallel with the Cannes Film Festival, right? Yes, we did. And we honored, his, we honored Professor Karl Badoche for his pioneering of this industry, which is a beautiful thing. Thank you, Professor. Congratulations, yes. Thank you, and uh, also, Angelique, uh, um, you had also uh, several programs, of course, but uh, the one that I have participated as well, as well is the World Peace Initiative with Films for Purpose that runs in Cannes Film Festival too. Yes, right. you have. One of the things I want to say about you is you're a busy lady doing amazing things and also a beautiful filmmaker that's empowering women. So our jury also appreciates what you're doing. It's just a beautiful thing that within the network that um, that we've created. And, and I want to thank also Professor Karl Padoche. We're all very talented as well. So that's what makes it beautiful is we have our own prestigious programs and we're also producing competitive projects that can make a difference within the marketplace. And you're one of our honorees because you, you make films for women in the film that you made about women empowerment. We're seeing that around the world where women are leading in the world and that's the future and that's what we need now. Exactly. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Angelique. Uh, professor, what is your impression about the films uh, you watched uh, during the festival up to now? Yes, I, this is a very uh, rich uh, festival, in my opinion. There is a great variety of films. And uh, I was uh, deeply impressed. I mean, uh, even the ones that were selected in the, as finalists, there was quite a lot. I mean, o over 30 films as finalists is, is quite unusual. That means that you had a large number of entries. And um, so I, uh, this year I participated in your uh, uh, short film, short film category, and um, uh, very impressive works. There's a whole bunch of them coming from Greece. They were very, very impressive. It was actually, it was very difficult to select uh, the best ones. And, you gave us a big headache, I have to <laughs> tell you, because I mean, <laughs> to select ones that we felt that they are the best, that was very, very difficult. I mean, you have a point system from one to three. And I mean, 
it was like very difficult to, to figure out which are the ones that would be selected as top. And it looks like there were some even from uh, uh, from Cyprus, but all over yes. the world. Yes. And so what you're doing, I understand that it has a double purpose. You are having an international festival, but also within that you have a little bit of a, uh, you know, helping over of Greece and Cyprus, especially Greece, uh, uh, to make and showcase their films. And I think you're serving these two purposes at the same time very well, because uh, you have a lot of, lot of entries from all over the world, but you also, <clears throat> you are able to uh, promote and showcase the best films coming from Greece. So that's a, a very, very good platform. Congratulations. Thank you very much, and uh, for uh, I'm impressed that you noticed that uh, Cyprus is another country, different uh, to to Greece. But we give yes, our festival gives a new chance to Greek filmmakers. Uh, so also we are very uh, the two countries are uh, near. So yeah, it's very easy for Greek filmmakers to travel to come to Cyprus. We, we uh, both countries speak the same language, uh, Greek, uh, the same religion. So it is like to be home. Uh, but thank you for uh, for uh, noticing this. And you know, these uh, films compete the same. Uh, sometimes we give um, best Greek short film, but I'm not sure if we will have this. Uh, this year, and uh, the category, the films you watched are, uh, f it is their first short film. So you watch the Got Talent, CYFM Got Talent category. There are also other <laughs> short films, more experienced and we call veteran short films. They are less, of course. I and, was, uh, uh, I was sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to, uh, to, to add also this about the short film selection. This year we have the opportunity uh, to, have, to do the festival also online, virtual. So we have the, this uh, luxury of time to select more films. I'm sure that I speak on behalf of uh, Princess Angelique Monet as well, that we are so sorry that they couldn't be there physically it, uh, and I certainly hope that next year we can be there in the wonderful, you know, Cyprus to be there physically at your festival. I like that. Uh, I, I think that we're a big family here. We have been uh, in Cannes at least two times. Uh, friends, friends, okay. People we know uh, participate in, in, in the festival with their films, like Zoe. And uh, Lawrence also is a new member uh, of the jury for the veteran short films, but by purpose, you don't see its other films. I mean, I, I don't I don't want to make to put you in a difficult uh, uh, situation to judge a film that from people you know. So you are not going, you didn't watch uh, Angelique. <laughs> Thank you for not, saying that. Yeah, not I you. I was getting nervous. <laughs> not you, neither, Lawrence. <laughs> okay. So, um, would you like uh, to? Okay. Uh, I know, uh, Carl, that uh, you 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 teach filmmaking in uh, teach. A university in New York, and uh, you have a specific um, topic. It is uh, filmmaking with smartphones, right? Yes. So uh, I actually started to teach that uh, over 10 years ago in 2009 when I started to teach that, and uh, it's the first and only uh, university course in the world that started to teach. Uh, uh, how to make movies on your phone, cell phone cinema. And um, I'm happy to say that after teaching it over 10 years, just now uh, a Campus Wire uh, online magazine uh, selected as number one, this course among the 17 most innovative 
university courses in the US. So at this moment, this course is number one in the United States in all universities. So I'm very happy about that. It took over 10 years to get this recognition. But uh, I actually started this even before uh, they really, uh, I'm considered one of the pioneers of, uh, of uh, making uh, films with cell phones. I started it as early as 2004. And at that time, the way it happened was that a year before in 2002 and three, I directed a feature film in Brazil. And um, the, because I make films all over the world. So in, in Brazil, it was a Brazil-Hungary co-production, Brazil-Hungary-USA. And I, I was directing the film and were shooting with a, a Sony 1000, uh, the very first digital handicam. And we shot the whole feature film with that. And then I, I had the same. I bought the same. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, I wasn't original in that because that was the continuation that uh, uh, we have to admit was called Dogma 95. That was by the Danish filmmakers, Lars von Trier, um, introduced and scandalized the Cannes Film Festival in 1995 by using this camera and show that you don't have to have big crew and big budget to make a feature film. You can shoot that with small digital cameras. So that's what I used. And two friends of mine from Hungary were participating in Brazil. And after that, they said, OK, when we go back to Hungary, let's start a new competition in the world. That was the first time in 2004, making three minute films in 24 hours. It became very popular. Now you see all over the world, they have competitions, 72 hours filmmaking, 48 hours filmmaking, 24 hour filmmaking. We were the first ones. And in that one, I said, hey, the phone is also digital. So we tell them not only to shoot with small digital cameras, authorized to make it on the phone. And sure enough, there were a couple of films under my supervision that were already made in 2004. And that's how the whole movement, uh, I participated in this movement that led to this. And uh, then I introduced it to many countries. 2007, I introduced to India. 2011, in Australia. Then Latin America through the Dominican Republic, of course, in the US and Europe and all over the place. So. Uh, Perhaps because of this, and I will be eternally grateful to Princess Angelique Monet, who then uh, in Cannes two years ago uh, started uh, uh, within her, uh, and she should talk about it, it's fantastic, uh, films of humanitarian purpose. She also introduced into that a new category, which is the humanitarian uh, cell phone cinema, but uh, I hope she can. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Calvados. So in 2016, our organization founded the World Peace and Tolerance Institute, where Professor Calvados was honored. He was honored as a legend, and he was also honored for his film that he made on, on Tagore. So basically, in getting to know him further and going to NYU and meeting the students and, and seeing the work, working at the United Nations, where Professor did come with me many times to participate because our organization has the ECHOSOC status, I realized that the sustainable future of, of smartphone cinema and what he's doing can really save uh, many of the industries and also help the poor and the individuals that are in rural communities. So what was a surprise for him is in 2018, not only did we have our normal program, but we also rolled out the Carl Badoge Humanitarian Cell Phone Cinema Awards, where it was the first time ever um, smartphones were screened in the marketplace. Also privately, where um, Petra, you were on the jury, we, we screened at the gala. Um, and this was the trend before um, COVID-19. Um, so, so the good news is, is with this awards presentation that took place at the American Pavilion, 2019, we, we did can um, virtual 
within the March I Do film, finally um, everyone sees uh, the future. And also we have archives now within the United Nations of what the work that we're doing within Hollywood. So we're really seeking to elevate the smartphone cinema community uh, into high profile films, good films, quality films. Um, I wanna congratulate Professor Carl Badoche for, for also believing in me because with UNESCO Center for Peace this summer in the midst of COVID, we were able to help UNESCO Center for Peace, my good friend, His Excellency Guy Dejokin with his summer camp where we had 500 youth from around the world in rural communities that have no filmmaking training. They're all diplomacy. And we created the M1 Smartphone Youth Festival specific for UNESCO Center for Peace where Professor was our co founder. So we're, we're going far with this. Um, we're, we're working with, um, obviously he has NYU, we're working with the United Nations platforms, and we're also working within Hollywood to show everyone the future of where we're going to go with this. And it feels great because I have a business side to, uh, to things as a sales agent and distributor and working with films of purpose. So it feels great to see L um, visions of, of legends like Professor Carl Badoche and being able to usher um, other levels onto this and to still have him involved with, with us and our organization. Yes. Just a um, point about the UN, because we, we introduced that in the United Nations uh, this way. These were all not simply people, these were delegates from all over the world. And we had a three day workshop. And within the three day workshop at the end of that, we actually had a festival of their films and quite a few of them were, I think uh, uh, you agree, uh, uh, Princess Angelique Monet, that they were quite good, right? They, to, 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 to be honest, they were better than some of the professional filmmakers and they were you. And that's what makes it beautiful. Um, some of the filmmakers that won, he's 15 um, out of Mexico. And he said that our program, on my date of birth, October 22nd, he said that the program changed his life. And can you imagine my dream is also working with youth going to Mars. So he was part of that program and he'll be receiving a Harvard certificate, but him winning our award also boosted his confidence because he's being trained to be a diplomat in the future. So it feels really good to that now we're virtually online as well. We can make more of an impact with our work, but mostly through the education platforms. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very excited that technology like a smartphone uh, can serve such a noble cause, humanitarian, so that you select uh, this genre humanitarian films it's uh, it's i think it's uh, very impressive and uh, very well appreciated and uh, personally i'm grateful uh, for that and uh, i would like to more films also in digital uh, way to to be done with such a, with such a, a cause uh, to serve uh, humanitarian causes uh, so, Carl, please, uh, you, because uh, you are more in the theory uh, uh, from us, maybe, uh, do you think that um, uh, mo mobile technology uh, can, is, is better than digital uh, way of filmmaking? Or uh, what is the difference? And uh, I know that it's very easy uh, to do a film with a smartphone, but uh, uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages doing a film uh, with mobile and not with a digital camera? So we are just coming out of a period uh, of COVID-19 or actually we are probably being thrown back again into that because there's a surge of the uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, regulations all over the world. So during this past year, because of COVID-19, it was amazing that all professionals had only one choice to work, and that was with the smartphone. Every single professional cinema, every single major television network, they could only do their programs by using uh, smartphones. There was no other way. I was shocked to see like great 
American television stars in their own home saying, well, I am hosting the program from my home using a smartphone. And nobody could tell the difference. But we knew that already because even in Hollywood, uh, they made already films with smartphones that went into commercial distribution. I'll give you two examples. One of them is a former student of ours from New York University. Uh, his name is Sean Baker. And he made a film in Hollywood um, and uh, only for $100,000 using cell phones. Mm -hmm. And um, but what he did is that you put an adapter in front of the cell phone lens. And with that lens adapter, he was able to use Panavision uh, lenses and the lenses were like four or five times larger than the entire phone. And they shot the film with that. The title is Tangerine. And I went into three, four movie theaters just to check audience reactions. They had no idea that this film was shot on phone. There is no difference in quality. Why? Because today the cell phones can record in 4K. Mm -hmm. and you use professional lenses. When we had cinema projected in, in, in the theaters, they projected 2K re resolution. So a phone has already double of that, of recording. Plus you have the, the lenses, the professional lenses. They have special steady cams for smooth movements. They have drone shots for helicopter shots. I mean, uh, the arsenal is a uh, uh, practically a professional, and then was followed by Steve Soderbergh, a famous director in, in Hollywood, who made his first feature in uh, cell phone cinema, was called uh, Unsane, and followed up with two other films. And uh, he used Hollywood stars, big production, but shot with the cell phone. One reason is is that with, when you shoot with a cell phone, the director, him or herself, can go up to the talent very close and establish a very intimate relationship. And the director can also shoot uh, alongside with the larger camera. Now, having said that, you cannot tell the difference in quality. But still, I'm not thinking that on the long term, the uh, methods of uh, uh, cell phone will replace all cameras. I'm looking at it as a new option. And this option makes it so democratic. It democratizes uh, filmmaking. Therefore, almost everybody can be a filmmaker. And that fits our age, because we are in the digital age and online. And anybody can make a film. And if it's a good film, it can be sent to the Cyprus International Film Festival and can win awards. Actually, there was a film in your festival that I have to excuse myself. I, I could not vote for that, because I have making it that was shot on cell phone. So uh, you cannot tell the difference. I'm sure yeah. Yeah. Other, other people in the jury yeah. who didn't know that was shot on cell phone, they would not be able to tell the difference. Yeah. You know, Carl, we have a category mobile uh, films, uh, but this uh, film, um, because it oh, was first shown, entered also this category, the got uh, talent, because, yeah, the difference, we cannot see the difference, as you Can't mentioned. See the <laughs> exactly. And see the difference, right? My my students at uh, New York University for the past ten years, we also participate in uh, the uh, uh, New York uh, Indian Film Festival where they show Bollywood, and we have a category. It's called New York MYU Mobile Bollywood. So the students have to make a one-minute Bollywood music video, and we showed it in the theater, in the festival. And a couple of years ago, Bollywood stars and producers came over to me and said that, uh, Professor, you're telling us that the films that we saw on the big screen, those were shot by phone? I said, yes. They say, but we cannot tell the difference. 
And I said, that's the point. You can't tell the difference. Yes. So for the people who just entered uh, in Facebook, I would like uh, to mention that uh, we are in the Inspire TV Live Talks uh, session during the Cyprus International Film Festival with special guests, Professor Carl Bardos, award-winning filmmaker, pioneer of smartphone filmmaking, filmmaking co-founder uh, of the Humanitarian Cell Phone Awards with uh, Princess Angelique Monet, uh, who is uh, she's an award-winning filmmaker, writer, director, producer of uh, the short film Royal Empires Unite. Uh, we have this film, uh, we have the honor to have this film in uh, the festival. And uh, she's founder of the Humanitarian Cell Phone Awards in Cannes with Carl, as I mentioned already. Uh, also in uh, the African uh, Artisan uh, Film Initiative, World Peace Initiative status to the United Nations and many more. But I want to make a, a more personal a question to Angelique uh, about the woman, the woman and uh, uh, about your origin. I would like uh, uh, at your roots, I would like to share with us uh, how is uh, to be a woman in today's uh, world and uh, also to, to have uh, roots in another uh, uh, continent as uh, Africa. Okay. Yeah. In, in, in Europe or the US. Okay. Well, the first, the first layer to, um, to being a woman in today's society is my family always trained me that to be a lady actually is to have grace, elegant style, humility and to be meek and that um, if you could master that on a day-to-day -day basis then you you are basically a royal you're a queen and that is the epitome of of what women empowerment is it's to be the best woman that you can be that serves uh, humanity and serves the community independent there of yourself so that's what I've worked on since that I was a little girl my story is that I had a learning disability I didn't talk until I was five it was the piano that opened me up. Um, in the fifth grade, I was on a first grade level and I was, I was actually part-time in special education. And it was the piano that made it that um, I was able to process information. I was bullied at this time. And then I was actually ready for high school when I was only nine years old, when I had to take the test. So what I'd like to tell girls is that self-esteem, um, being bullied, uh, doesn't have a race, color, or creed. Okay, being strong in the world and believing in yourself is just the rich, the poor, the, the middle class, all of us have to, to have something to believe in. And if you believe in yourself, then that is the epitome of it all, no matter what, no matter who tells you that you can't achieve, have a dream and believe in it. The second part is that I'm very proud of my heritage. When, when you hear my voice, um, though at the present time I'm in Kensington, London, you hear my voice, I am authentic American. As a matter of fact, if you want to learn how to speak American, I have taught classes, even um, American English in Italy. I am authentic to American because I am native to the America, coming from many Native American and extinct tribes. Through the transatlantic slave trade, which would have been 401 years ago, I am African. And uh, so I was raised African American, and I do have a mixed race heritage. Um, as close as a grandparent away. So this is why I believe that we're one. This is why I believe that we're the melting pot. Um, this is why in America, since a little girl, I have worked for diversity, equality, bringing all the people together that are underserved, underrepresented um, to create diversity. We all love Africa. It's the basis of where we all come from. If you look at Africa and you look at the, uh, the indigenous people, the native American people around the world, we see the richness and heritage and culture. And, um, and so I'm, I'm really excited that uh, the film that you're, you're honoring shows me receiving my royal Yoruba name because part of my African heritage is of the Yoruba royals and Ademi Basi, which means my crowns have increased um, as you see, I do a lot for society. So 
basically the crown is is as you it's it's a it's a metaphor in that my crowns have increased and my goal is to bring all the crowns together to bring all the world together so that we can become one and um and the beautiful thing about my dna is my ancestors are inside of me my friends are around the world and it seems it's it, though we're in a trying time right now there's so many of us that are working really hard for this and it seems like we're going to be able to do it, especially with the youth um, that are around today that I've spoken to and mentored and, and they're out there doing really good things. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> but okay. everything. Thank you for being in this earth <laughs> and oh, thank this you. festival. <laughs> so, Carl, I have another question for you uh, about your students. Uh, how many uh, female students do you have and how many male, first of all, and uh, who are more efficient? <laughs> well, uh, New York University a Film School is the largest short film production company in the world. We make 5,000 short productions every year, 5,000. And uh, that of, uh, includes short television programs, uh, documentaries, uh, short, short features, experimental, and animation, uh, all of them, uh, 5,000. And uh, we are uh, actually most famous for uh, learning by doing. So this is a university where they come in and the very first year already they make things. So out of the 5,000, if you look at it, each student, by the time they graduate, they will have had about 70, 80 films of their own. And they worked on hundreds of others. So they have a yeah. tremendous, uh, experience in all facets and they have to learn everything. They have to hands on, they have to record sound. They have to know how to record the sound, how to mix the sound, uh, lenses of the camera, every single practical aspect of filmmaking they have to go through. And that's a specialty uh, at NYU, as well as of course they go through, uh, you know, um, uh, every single step, from the idea, developing it into screenplay, etc. I hold the house record. I've been teaching 30 different courses in filmmaking, mm -hmm. including writing and uh, production and everything else. And so, uh, and I created two new subjects, as I said already, mm -hmm. uh, South Cinema is one in 2009. And I did another one which is running uh, since uh, 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 2012, um, nine years now, and that's called No Excuses Cinema, Micro-Budget Features. Now that might interest mm -hmm. you because these students prepare a very, very low micro-budget feature film. So when they graduate, they can finish a full feature, not only a short, all film schools around the world normally promote one final big film, what they call the thesis film. And these are normally under 20 minutes. If they want to go to Cannes, they have to be under 15 minutes because the highest uh, prestige film festivals in the world uh, accept shorts only under 15. But there are others that they accept it up to 45. And there are 3000 festivals so that there is a way to go. But what's most important here is that the shorts show their talent. Yes, they can use it as a calling card, but it's even better if they can show a feature. So that's why I developed this micro budget features so they can have a full feature film to show to producers and investors they are able to do a full feature film. Yeah. What is the length of the studies? And uh, do you provide the equipment, the shooting equipment and uh, the, st the studio in order to do the editing and uh, the sound uh, design? Do you provide all this uh, equipment to the students? 
yes, it's, it, everything is fully provided. And uh, uh, cameras it, also, cameras for everybody. Fantastic cameras. I mean, if you would see our equipment room, it takes up an entire school, uh, an entire street block full of cameras, lighting equipment, everything, dollies, everything yeah. you can imagine. Wow. What is the length of the, of the studies? How, how long, how many years? So there are two categories, two, two parts. One is undergraduate, that's four years, and they get a bachelor of fine art degree. And then we have the graduate school, that's three years, and that gives a master of fine art, MFA category, uh, I mean, degree. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we have over a thousand uh, undergraduates, which is one of the largest school in the, in the world. I mean, that's more than all European film schools combined. And uh, the graduate school has about uh, 200 students. So wow. we are talking about 1,200 students making 5,000 productions per year with yeah. full equipment support, editing rooms, anything you can imagine. Yeah. And what happened to these films? They produced these films and what else? They make a circuit in the festivals maybe, but yes. is there any yes. provision? I have something in my mind that uh, uh, maybe a selection of uh, your films can be included in the Inspire TV platform that we inaugurate uh, this year in uh, this festival and we offer all uh, selected films in Cyprus International Film Festival and Bridges International Film Festival are eligible uh, to have distribution in this uh, platform. And uh, of course, uh, first on filmmakers are uh, preferable, preferable and most uh, welcomed. So, uh, yes, it's a very nice idea. We should uh, talk uh, more about that. Uh, mm -hmm. But these films, these student films go all over the world, not only into student festivals, and they regularly among the winners at the Cannes, because Cannes has also a, a, a film school category, uh, the Cine Fondition, and yes. many times MYU films win that. And I also have some of the films. I myself personally supervise over 1500 films and uh, uh, some of them actually won the Oscar. So they yes. go all over the place. Yes, but what about the rest? I'm a filmmaker too. I was in Cannes Film Festival at Short Film Corner. I produced 10 films, but only one <laughs> entered the Short Film Corner. And uh, I'm looking to, to, to promote, to display my films, some platforms. So we create this now. It's an opportunity yeah. for independent filmmakers who maybe they don't have the connections, they don't have the money uh, to hire an agent uh, to promote them. So have it, this in mind. You have a very strong, a very high prestige film festival. And I think you're doing a great service to uh, filmmakers around the world to have your short film category. And if you would have, you know, more, uh, you really, you, you really uh, are doing a, a great mission on behalf of filmmakers and, and, yes. and, and it's a and, wonderful platform. Yes. And, and they come again with their first feature film. <laughs> That's Maybe it's not a premiere, but they come. And uh, the, the most I like is that uh, collaborations raise uh, within the festival. They meet each other. And after two years, three years, I learn, I find out that they did a film together. They did something together. But I, I say, you have to, to announce this uh, good news uh, to, to the festival, to me. We are so proud uh, of, of you. That's why I think this year uh, during the pandemic, uh, the jury have uh, maybe, th th there are many members. So 126 filmmakers will be somehow connected with you. Mm -hmm. And who knows what will happen in but two years first, and three years. Speaking of micro budget, we, we have to ask uh, uh, again, Princess Angelique Monet, because she established a connection to the number one micro budget filmmaking in the world and that's called Nollywood, right? You have a yes. special connection there, yes. 
I do. I've, been, I've actually been working working on this for a while is to merge Nollywood, Hollywood, and Bollywood and to create one uh, one industry within the UN. So um, so this Nollywood is actually the number one industry that makes the most films exactly. in, within yeah. the world. But and so what will be the gender? It will be humanitarian always, well, right? Everything I do is not humanitarian. Um, Greta Joanne Entertainment, actually my production company, named after my grandmother, is the sponsor of the AFI World Peace Initiative at NCAN. However, we, we have a slate of films that range from drama to narrative features to um, humanitarian. So there's there's different sides to Angelique Monet. I'm an actress, okay? I'm, I'm a performer. So if I was to do, I and gave that case. all up. Yeah. And I gave case. that all up to be a humanitarian so that I could make a difference. But when we're talking about film, film is death. Film is drama. Film is is uh, is is the heated moment. So we we honor films that are not necessarily humanitarian. And I also distribute films. I've worked with Danny Glover. Um, with his film Chasing Shakespeare, where I've worked with many, many Hollywood best with films that are just really uh, thought provoking. Um, we're, we're actually going to be honoring a film coming up this year. And there's uh, some distribution behind it as well with Greta Joanne. So we've, we've done good work. We've worked with Isaiah Washington as well um, to brand one of his films. It was actually in the, I don't want to say horror, but I want to say the thriller genre. So um, getting back to the Nollywood industry, Nollywood is the top industry in the world that makes the most films and the, the, they, they make a lot of money. And so there was a glitch uh, recently because of the oversaturation. And that's why Professor and I are also going to be working um, with smartphone. The founder, um, the co-founder is Her Royal Highness Princess Maura Doon, who's also on our board. She was on the jury with us in 2018 in Cannes. So I have tracked everyone down um, to, to be part of this movement to take Nollywood actually to the next level. We're seeing in Hollywood that many of the African stars are actually acting and becoming Oscar winners. So there's so many talent in Africa to, to bring up and that's the movement that uh, is being created. So 2021, I wanna tell everyone, um, Princess Angelique Monet is a humanitarian. However, you're, you will see some drama films and you will see with Professor Kalbadosh as well, we're working on narrative films. Um, he has an amazing film that he's uh, that we're, we're also producing to merge Nollywood, Hollywood, and Bollywood. So, and so, uh, uh, Princess uh, uh, uh actually, the Nolly Nollywood cinema started in her living room. Am I correct? Yes, um, Her Royal Highness Princess Mordun is a pioneer in, in many areas. She really is, and as, as well as um, journalism. So, I'm really happy to have her as a part of our life and within our brand. She did. It was it. It was it was a humble. It was a humble beginning that started within her living room when she was in Nigeria, and then it merged into such a big industry. So now that it is such a big industry in the United Kingdom, they're still making films. They're still finding a way to make films and to get the stories out. They're still shooting films in Africa, specific to West yeah. Africa, Ghana, and Nigeria. Even in the midst of of the pandemic, nothing is stopping this industry from doing what they have to do. And so that's one of the things that, um, that I wanna say within the United Nations structure, why um, there, there, there's, there's other things that I'm working on is, is a handbook for the Me Too so that we have a, a, a way to define our movie sets and that's gonna go into all the industries. But what I'll say is perseverance is what the Nollywood industry have. And a lot of the, the rural communities they have what we don't have in Hollywood. That's the drive, the incentive, the motivation, the talent that I'm gonna make a film regardless of what I have, whatever tool I have, I'm gonna go study online to figure out, you, our students that you saw um, in the smartphone, yeah. cell phone with UNESCO, many of them came out of Nigeria and the films that we got were just as good, um, to be honest, they were just as good as any film, yeah. three of them. Angelique, Angelique, time out. <laughs> I okay. have a question. Why in Europe we don't see uh, Nollywood? We don't watch uh, Nollywood films. Why they they don't come here? Why you don't bring them in? Okay, in okay, that's a good question. Um, the situation with the Nollywood industry is um, 
it's actually since the year 2008, I know that sounds like a long time, I've been working on, on the merge that has happened now, okay? So now the situation is many of the African talent are leaving Nollywood and they're working within Hollywood, okay? And that includes many of the directors. So there are still many that are focused in on the Nollywood community. And these are novella stories. So you don't really need backgrounds, you don't really need drops, you just need really talented actors. What happens is that these films go to New York City Okay, and there's a huge market for them in New York City. And then what happens is that there's a community in New York and there's a community actually in London and there's a community in Germany. And these are the Europeans that, that bring Nollywood talent or the, the, the Africans that are, that are in the Nollywood industry that live here. So they have their own marketplace, their own uh, push, their own theatrical releases, their own sales and, and how they do things. So. So the good news is that uh, there are many platforms that are developed. I developed one back in 2011. Now, um, because of diversity, which is a beautiful thing, they are on Amazon, okay? So the films are not being bootlegged so that you're walking professor in New York and seeing the, the films at the strip. These films are now getting on Amazon. Now they're getting on Netflix. And now there it's a big it's a big push. So where my role is now is is my original goal. I, I was behind the scenes working to to bring uh, the industry up. And now in front of the scenes, my goal is to merge the, the industries so that it's not just specific to Nollywood. We're we're about diversity. So we're we're merging um, rural talent to bring into one new new genre. Yeah. yeah. I am uh, I am uh, blessed to work uh, with a Nigerian uh, director of photography in uh, a short film that I shoot in uh, Central Park in New York in uh, 2018 and uh, Passion Sokwonofo and uh, also because uh, she had her film screening in uh, New Jersey and her cousin uh, with the same uh, name, uh, a feature Nollywood uh, film that she shot in Nigeria. I watched these films and uh, I love them. I mean, I love the culture, uh, uh, of course, the locations, the costumes, the history, the traditions that uh, all are uh, obvious in, uh, in, in Nollywood films, in Nigerian films. So, and I was looking for Nigerian films for the festival, but it's so difficult to find that attract. That's why I, I didn't know yeah. you were looking. There's a host of, of many of many, especially women. What's really beautiful, what's going on now is that there's a lot of women Nollywood filmmakers. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So so maybe we talk about this later so that we can include of course, this. of course, for next year. Yes. Uh, so Professor Carl Bardos, what is uh, your uh, next plan, your dream for the next five years apart uh, the cooperation with Princess Angelique Monet? Well, uh, it's uh, furthering the uh, uh, mobile phone filmmaking, of course. Uh, and uh, uh, with uh, Princess Angelique Monet, we are also working on uh, a, a big feature film that hopefully we can make happen. And um, it's um, uh, just a footnote for the uh, conversation so that the, uh, the viewers, your viewers will learn that uh, the three major countries in terms of feature filmmaking, number one is not Hollywood. Number one is Bollywood, which is India. And I'm working a lot in India and we are preparing a, a big feature film in India. I've been working in that industry for 25 years. The number two is Nollywood, the number of feature films made. And that is because, and that's very good also for you, for your mission. The reason they are successful because the local audience look at the local films, they buy them, they look at them. And number three, in the world is Hollywood in terms of the number of films made, feature films made. And so it's Bollywood, Nollywood, Hollywood. And we are hoping to combine all of them. And in my future plans, uh, films that I'm developing, I'm trying to combine all three together. And that's what uh, the type of production I'm trying to put together, which would be uh, Hollywood, Bollywood, Nollywood 
uh, feature. And um, so uh, basically, the way I see my life and my work, if you ask me, I'm first and for I first and foremost, I make filmmakers. I make filmmakers. Yes. Then okay. in my spare time, here and there, I make my films. So that's the order. Okay, thank you. Uh, Princess Angelique, do you want to add something before we finish and before we see the trailer of uh, your uh, film, uh, Royal Empires Unite, that participates in the festival also? Well, I just want to say hard work and, and believing in yourself and understanding the value of talent and education. And education doesn't necessarily have to be degrees. It could be information and learning and mentorships and internships is crucial for the next wave. Um, we're one and I'm really excited that the arts is what's connecting us today. And we're building a global family. And I'm very excited um, that through the smartphones, through our films, through the arts, we're gonna be able to do this. So thank you very much being with us uh, today and uh, see you in the festival next year see you in Cannes we will see <laughs> in New York maybe but of course in Cyprus you are most welcome next year to be here Ciao, It's a part of a movement, a movement to bring about a better quality of life for all, especially the younger generation. Not knowing colors, not knowing nationalities, she's actually amalgamating everyone into one. Receiving this recognition is very important because we're in an era where we can't control our past but we can dictate our future.